everyone and welcome back to Python Lessons and Code Academy. So today we're starting a new topic which is using classes in Python. So I will say that I have used classes before but not in Python in C++ but I actually don't remember that much about classes. So let why, la why not get started? Python is an object-oriented programming language which means you can use classes and Classes are very useful if you can use them uh, the right way. You can think of an object as a single data structure that contains uh, data as well as functions. Functions of objects are called methods. For example, anytime you call length of Eric, Python is checking to see whether the string object you passed it has a length and if it does, it returns the value associated with that attribute. When you call mydict.items parentheses python checks to see if my dict has an items method which all dictionaries have and executes that method if it finds it but what makes eric a string and my dict a dictionary the fact that there are instances of the str or string and dict dictionary classes respectively a class is just a way of organizing and producing objects with similar attributes and methods so a list is a class, a string is a class, an integer is a class, a float is a class, all of the variables are classes. And uh, object-oriented programming is just you can make your own variable, just simply. So let's check out the code in the editor to see, uh, editor to the right. We've defined our own class, proved and created a lemon instance. When you're ready, click and save submit code to get started creating classes and objects of your own. So we create a class fruit. So this, uh, if uh, this is how it would be if it was a string or something like that. So you make your own class, but in this case we're calling it fruit. And then you can make a uh, an instance of that class, and we m call it lemon so a lemon uh, and assign it to be a fruit of those things and then what it does is so let's go on let's start with this line we make a lemon equals fruit so the class fruit and we say that the name of the fruit is lemon I'm guessing its color is yellow and its taste is sour and something false, I'm not sure what that is, but let's see if we can figure it out. So we create a class called fruit. And this object in the parentheses, I think is, you have to put it there by default. I don't completely understand it, but I'm pretty sure it just needs to be there. Then that's a comment, a class that makes various tasty fruits. And then we make a function kind of thing inside our fruit class and say uh, this init is also a like a default function so it's I think this is the builder or I think that the constructor the constructor I'm pretty sure which we will cover later on I think and we say uh, in that function self is by default you have to use self and then we have the name and it's a lemon then we have color it's yellow well I'm actually gonna add a U there because it's annoying me. <laughs> and then we have flavor, also a U. And is it poisonous? Well, false. Lemons aren't poisonous. And I will change color there as well and flavor there. And then we have saying that self, and I don't understand what this does. Hopefully it gets explained later on. Then we make another function kind of thing inside the class and say, description so you can call this function uh, through calling uh, lemon dot description and parentheses I'm pretty sure and yes as we can see there and it's going to say I'm a lemon and I taste uh, sour because we have those attributes to this class and those are assigned to be yellow uh, lemon yellow and sour and then we have another function is edible self and that's also by default as well as here if it's not poisonous then it's edible 
If it is poisonous, then it's probably not edible. So let's see what's going to happen if we run this after I put some use in. Well, it doesn't. Um, <laughs> color. Ah, whatever. Uh, I'm actually going to reload and just reset the code. And I guess I uh, I'll just have to handle it without the use. So it says. I'm a yellow lemon and I taste sour. So that's the description. I'm a self color, self name, and self flavor. Uh, and it's, then it says, is it edible? Well, if it's not poisonous, it's probably edible. Not with everything. I mean, iron isn't poisonous to what I know, but it's not edible. But oh well. <laughs> so let's move on. Class syntax. The basic class consists of o only the class keyword, the name of the class, and the class from which the new class inherits in parentheses. We'll get to inheritance soon. Uh, yes, okay. So for now, our classes will inherit the object class like so. So we just inherit object, which is the default. And then you make your own class after the colon. This gives them uh, the powers and abilities of a Python object. By convention, user-defined Python class name starts with a capital letter. Create a class called animals or animal in the editor. So, okay, we need to do this. And so it's similar to how you would define a function, except for that in the parentheses you put the inherited class and instead of def you put class and you still have the parentheses and you still have the colon there as well as indentation after the colon for now in the body of our class use the pass keyword pass doesn't do anything but it's useful as a placeholder in areas of your code where python expects an expression oh I actually didn't know that that could be useful in an if statement or if elif and else that's cool so we learned something new good class your classes okay um, <laughs> we'd like our classes to do more than well nothing so we'll have to replace our pass with something else you may have noticed in our example back in the first exercise that we started our definition off with a an odd looking function uh, underscore underscore in it underscore underscore parentheses and this function is required for classes and it's used to initialize the object it creates so it probably is the constructor. So init always takes at least one argument, self, that refers to the object being created. You can think of init as the function that boots up each object it the class creates. Okay, so we need to remove the pass statement Cl and then go ahead and define an init, uh, oops, it's underscore underscore then the parentheses function and then we need to put a self not self self I believe it was um, pass it the argument self for now we'll explain how this works in greater detail in the next section okay finally put the pass into the body of the in its definition since it will expect an indented block so let's just do the pass there then and see what happens and uh, nothing should happen so that's good <laughs> So let's not get too selfish, okay? Excellent. Let's make one more tweak to our class definition, then go ahead and in instantiate, create our first object. So when you make something, for example, a number equals five, this is a instantiating an integer. You can also make the same thing here, animal, and then whatever it requires. In this case. If it's like this, nothing. And you're instantiating an animal, basically. Uh, <laughs> so like this, you're instantiating an integer. Like this, you're instantiating an animal. If you want it, if you want it to, un to understand it better. Hopefully that explains it. So far, init only takes one parameter, self. This is a Python convention. There is nothing magic about the word self. However, it's overwhelmingly common to use self as the first parameter in init, so you should do this so that other people will understand your code. Okay, 
I don't understand what it's actually trying to say there, but I guess we should just use it. The part that is magic is the fact that self is the first par parameter passed to init. Python will use the first parameter that init receives to refer to the object being created. This is why it's often called self, since this parameter gives the object being created its identity. Oh, okay. So if you make an so an animal, and then make it equal to anim yeah, animal, the self is going to refer to this, is what I, I understand. I might be wrong, so don't trust me on that. So let's do two things in the editor. Pass in it a second parameter, name. Okay. Uh, in the body of init, let the function know that name refers to the created object's name by typing self.name equals name. I can just copy that instead of type it, and we don't need pass anymore. This will become crystal clear in the next section. I hope so. <laughs> okay, so that works, and we can move on then. Instantiating your first object. So, okay, perfect, now we're ready to start creating objects. We can access attributes in our objects using dot notation. Here's how it works. So we have our class, which in our case is animal, in their case is a square. And then to instantiate something, uh, let's just call it my animal because that's the example. Make it animal and parentheses. And here, do we need to pass a name? I think we do. Oops, not like that. And because it should be a string, I think. And then we can, if we use that as an example, we can print the function dot name. Well, it's not a function in this case, it's just dot. I think that in C++ it might have been like uh, this instead of uh, like this. I don't think you can do this this way, or it might have been the uh, other dash and greater than, but I'm not sure. So, and that's C plus plus anyway. So we're not going to have to worry about that. So first, we create a class named Square with an attribute sides. So we have, in our case, we have an attribute name. But in this case, name we don't know the name of it, so we'll have to pass a name. Outside the class definition, we create a new instance of Square named MyShape and access that attribute using MyShape.Sides. So, like that. Outside the animal class definition, create a variable named... Okay, so we need to call it Zebra. I was wrong on that. And I'm guessing that's gonna be Zebra as well. Uh, and set it equal to animal... Oh, Jeffrey. Nope, not Zebra. Completely wrong. Got everything wrong this lesson. Oh well. <laughs> then print out zebra's name. If we're stuck, we can get the hint, but I think that should work, but it doesn't, because that's not how you spell animal, is it? It's an I, it not a U. Okay, there's something wrong again. Line 6. My animal is not defined, because it's supposed to be zebra. And if we do that, there we go, so it prints Jeffrey. Okay, uh, so that was actually quite a lot of knowledge, this just one lesson. So hopefully you guys understood this. So um, if you didn't understand everything completely, then don't worry. We still have a lot of lessons to go, which is 13. And hopefully those will explain. But if you would like to know more, then do ask in the comment section down below and I will do my best to explain how it works. If it's not in the, um, what's it called, in the list that we're going to learn in Code Academy, I will definitely explain it. Otherwise, I will just tell you to stay tuned. But until next time, please like, share, subscribe, and comment if you liked the video. If you didn't like the video, then please dis click the dislike button and tell me why you didn't like the video so that I can improve for next time. So until ne that next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.